Thank you for downloading this episode of a History of Central Florida podcast. This is the podcast where we explore Central Florida's history through the artifacts found in local area museums and historical societies. This series is brought to you by Riches, the regional initiative to collect the histories, experiences, and stories of Central Florida, and the Orange County Regional History Center. I am Katie Kelly, and I will be your host for today's episode called Dixon's Folly. Take a moment to look out of the window of your home, car, or office. Everywhere you look, you will see evidence of the most transformative event of the 20th century in America. I'm referring, of course, to the rise of the automobile. The mobility made possible by motor vehicles has influenced every aspect of American life, and the need to accommodate ease of travel has shaped the landscape of the entire country. Here in Central Florida, the region was sparsely populated at the time automobiles began transforming the countryside. The challenge to accommodate this new form of mobility was especially unique in America's cities. In this episode, we are discussing an early attempt to regulate traffic. This object, created in Orlando in 1905, became known as Dixon's Folly. Just over 100 years ago, the landscape of Central Florida was drastically different from what we see today. Interstates and highways did not exist. The vast majority of roads were made of dirt or sand, homes did not have garages, and most people would not have been able to even conceive of using lighted signals at intersections to regulate traffic. At the turn of the century, there were approximately 8,000 cars registered in the United States. Within one decade, this number ballooned to nearly half a million. The rapid increase of automobiles in America initially outpaced the urban landscape that was designed to accommodate horses, buggies, or even trains. Here is what Dr. Julian Chambliss from Rollins College told us about the problems inherent to the introduction of the automobile to the American urban landscape. With the inclusion of the automobile, you see a wide-ranging effect on the American urban landscape. Early in the, or late in the 19th century, early in the 20th century, the automobile really is a new entree into a space that's, for all intents and purposes, public and crowded. Pedestrians, animals, bicycles, wagons, all are on the street. But the automobile, of course, represents a new and demanding participant in that square. And one of the first things that you do see is the need for better technology in terms of the street, in terms of the construction. So first wooden blocks, then stone, then, of course, the asphalt. And you also see regulation that has to give way to the fact that the street is no longer safe for pedestrians. Say what we want about animals, they don't move as quickly as an automobile. And so very quickly, the need for regulation in terms of vehicle controls creates safety issues linked to the automobile. So the presence of the automobile forces a new contextualization for what the street is and greater regulation in order to ensure safety. The transition to the paved asphalt roads that are the norm today was a gradual process. Here in Central Florida, the need to create a hard road surface was especially urgent given the high precipitation rates and sandy terrain. One of the first proponents for the development of hard road surfaces to accommodate automobiles in this area was H. H. Dixon, a prominent Orlando businessman and the creator of this episode's artifact. In 1905, Dixon invented a car track which was inspired by train rails. It was designed to allow cars to drive along the road without getting stuck in the mud. The Orange County Regional History Center owns a segment of track that was salvaged in the 1940s when it was removed at that time to make way for pavement. Originally, two cement tracks were laid parallel to each other on Lakeview Avenue, allowing one car access to the road without getting stuck in the mud. Dixon's intention was that this invention would provide a relatively inexpensive solution to Orlando's bad roads problem. Unfortunately, Dixon's good intentions were doomed to failure. Cars traveling in opposite directions along the track would meet in the middle, requiring one car to not only back off the track, but to completely pull off the road, exacerbating the very problem the invention was intended to avoid. Thus, the invention soon came to be regarded as Dixon's Folly. Dixon's Folly 
is a somewhat humorous example of the impact the automobile had on cities at that time. While the physical spaces of our country were being adapted to accommodate the automobile, a profound psychological change was also taking place amongst Americans that would eventually allow the automobile to emerge as one of our most significant cultural icons. Dr. Fawn Gordon of the University of Central Florida spoke to us about this change in the American mentality regarding the automobile. Certainly automobiles were available, both um, domestic and foreign. Both men and women drove. They were considered the toys of the elite. So the elite had them first because there were two things you did with cars. You toured and raced. And touring, that meant that people went in rural areas. And there were roads in rural areas because, of course, people drove carriages and rode horses. But cars tended to frighten horses and run over chickens and dogs and other kinds of livestock. And so rural residents resented automobiles because they were dangerous and they weren't able to afford them. And tension and animosity against automobile drivers in some places was so intense that automobile drivers were actually stoned you know, residents would throw things at them in an effort to discourage their their driving in their neighborhoods. And some of the early laws that were passed were laws that required, theoretically, drivers to have someone walk in front of them and let people know that someone driving was coming along. But, of course, that proved impractical. But that was an attempt on the part of rural residents to limit or eliminate automobile touring in their areas. The democratization of automobility was certainly facilitated by Henry Ford and his building of uh, the Model T. Because of mass production, he was able to bring the price down below $300 so that it became affordable. So once the Model T was introduced, that created right this moment of democratization of the automobile. And then the middle class and the working class could afford automobiles and not just the elite. As local doctors and farmers embraced the automobile and adopted it for their work, local residents began to accept it as a factor in their lives, and this helped to lead to its popularization. Throughout the first part of the 20th century, Dixon continued to advocate for the construction of hard road surfaces in the Orlando area. He tirelessly exercised his political and social influence to promote the advancement of the Good Roads Movement in Orlando. Fortunately, the failure of his early attempt did not dissuade him. He eventually earned the title, the father of the Good Roads. Few inventions have transformed life in America as completely as the automobile. Because of the automobile, we can travel virtually anywhere in the country independently. In fact, the personal independence afforded by the automobile has become an integral part of our American identity. Since most adult Americans own a car regardless of income, geography, or occupation. Additionally, in Central Florida, the automobile helped to create the area's regional identity as a tropical tourism magnet. As early as the 1920s, Florida was a popular tourist destination for the ever-increasing ranks of auto-owning Americans. Known as the Tin Canners, these enthusiasts would hop in their cars and tour Florida's scenic routes and enjoy its warm climate, natural beauty, and abundant hunting and fishing. Attractions, roadside camps, and motels to accommodate tin can tourists began to spring up throughout Central Florida as business-minded men realized there was significant money to be made from auto-driven tourism. Dixon's Folly is a reminder of the impact the automobile had on the transformation of the physical landscape of the city. As we have seen here, the transformation did not stop with our physical world. The automobile changed the way Americans think about space, mobility, and personal liberty. Here in Central Florida, the democratization of the automobile was a hugely influential factor in creating the cultural identity that still exists today. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of History of Central Florida podcast. For more information about Dixon's Folly and other artifacts that tell the history of Central Florida, please visit the Orange County Regional History Center 
at 65 East Central Boulevard, Orlando, Florida, 32801. Make sure to join us for our next episode titled Turpentine Industry.